Hello everybody, I'm uh, going to explain the homework to you. Now um, we have basically uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. Uh, the fifth one is about the quality of your report. Now um, uh, in the first question we have uh, provided a system transfer function, you can see it here. Now um, the question asks you to uh, define a PID uh, design problem uh, using the algebraic methods, of course. Um, uh, you can state that using that. Um, but uh, here we will use a different approach. Uh, we uh, ask you to uh, define a problem uh, in a matrix notation. So uh, since the controller has three parameters, PI, PD, and uh, KP, KI, and KD. Uh, so you will choose only two of them, and the other one will be uh, parametric. So there are uh, quite some versions to it. You choose whatever you want, but only two uh, coefficients uh, will be uh, placed here, and then uh, the relation will be a uh, two by two matrix times this two by one vector consisting of. Uh, the uh, controller parameters and then a two by one uh, vector again that uh, has some values and a controller parameter, the free parameter in it. Now, once you have defined this the matrix uh, equation, you will solve for these two parameters by taking the inverse of this matrix and then uh, acquire the solution here. You will use MATLAB for that, or at least I suggest you to use MATLAB for that. And then uh, you will calculate the uh, closed loop characteristic polynomial, which is called PCS, which is a closed loop. So you have to control the system in a closed loop. Uh, get the characteristic polynomial, define it using these parameters. You're, so you have to plug in these uh, unknowns into the uh, into the uh, uh, polynomial. So there should be only one variable here in PCS, the free variable, namely. And we will also, uh, you will also define the zero polynomial, which is again the same. Uh, it is the zero polynomial that is added to the closed loop, so the numerator of the closed loop. And you will also again have only one parameter in here if you plug in these. So you should plug in, plug them in. Since you have only one parameter per polynomial, you can then uh, go ahead and generate the root locus plots for them. So you have to uh, uh, convert that polynomial. Uh, into a symbolic uh, fraction that shows a uh, uh, that will define the transfer function that will be used for that root locus and then you will convert that into the transfer function object and uh, give the root locus plot for both polynomials and then looking at these root locus plots you can choose uh, the free parameter so that you have a good setup uh, in terms of dominant pole placement and then uh, provide the step response pole zero maps uh, and your final uh, 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 for your final design. So basically, the steps are to define the PID design problem uh, in this matrix notation, then solve for uh, these two uh, uh, controller parameters, and then uh, define the uh, characteristic polynomial and the zero polynomials. And then uh, you will convert these polynomial uh, equations into a root locus uh, equation and uh, get the, extract the transfer function that is needed for that root locus for each uh, polynomial. And then plot them and then use both plots simultaneously to design or uh, choose the last uh, remaining uh, free parameter. Once you've done that, you will uh, end up with the solution and you will plot the step response and this, the pole zero map of that solution for your final design. Now the dominant poles are given directly, so you will not calculate anything here. And uh, uh, different from earlier or different from uh, the method that we use in our course is that you will not use the uh, coefficient, uh, uh, coefficient uh, algebraic methods. So uh, you have to use the characteristic polynomial here and every polynomial satisfies its roots. So this uh, sentence is very crucial. If you do not use this method, uh, then don't expect full uh, grade from this question. 
So since we use uh, the methods, the algebraic method or the root locus method in our uh, course, these two are not available in this homework. You can check your uh, um, uh, answers if they're true, but you will uh, you are asked here and the originality here is that you have to use the polynomial method, but not the coefficient uh, method, but uh, using directly the uh, polynomial itself. So you have to uh, think about this a little bit, uh, but I'm sure you will be able to see what I mean by this. So this is basically a different method and uh, you will see if you uh, can solve this that this is much easier than using uh, the other methods that we are using uh, in our class. Uh, so basically as an outline for Q1 you need to use the polynomial not the algebraic method because you have code available for that and it, it becomes a, a trivial example. So there's a little bit uh, thought process here and you should provide me the steps. You should guide me through these steps. How can I use the closed loop uh, polynomial and uh, define my design problem without defining with a residue polynomial? So that's basically what I mean here. And you should also not provide a root locus uh, solution to this because uh, I am not asking root locus, not the angle condition, not the gain condition. So you are basically forced through uh, this sentence here that you should go and use the polynomial itself. So think about that a little bit. Uh, once you see it, it will become so easy and you will uh, maybe uh, uh, not even use the other methods anymore because this is the most simplest, most elegant way of uh, designing a PID controller or a, a, uh, at least stating the PID control problem. Um, uh, uh, as a trick here, I might say that you might use COEFs a little bit wisely for this question, this COEFs function, because you can use it, you can combine it with subs in order to get every term you want, any term you want. Uh, so that's that. And in order to ease, uh, give you another hint, you might uh, want to define all your controller parameters using this here, since K and real. Um, because uh, you might experience some problems if you do not do this. So KPK and KD should be defined with this K, uh, Sims K and real. So that's Q1. Basically, you will repeat the same, but only the poles are changing. So there's another challenge here. Once you've done Q1, you will see that Q2 is not the exact same, uh, and you uh, will need to uh, adapt to it. And if you think about it, uh, it's very basic knowledge that you have to see and use here. Uh, hope that you will see it. So Q1 and Q2 are pretty different approaches for PID control design, but very useful. And if you have a computer available, basically using this method uh, 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 is very easy. You will not be even needing the, uh, the solve method, uh, the solve function. So basically, if you solve Q1, uh, you will not use the solve uh, function from MATLAB. So because you have a, a matrix representation, you can take the inverse and multiply it. So in Q3, uh, you will repeat Q1, but only for the design. Do not repeat anything uh, other than that. Just uh, repeat your design here, your final result here. You have a result, you have KPKI and KD, you have the controller defined and the system defined. Uh, you're asked to convert that into a PID controller, and that uh, hopefully works better than the PID. And just uh, take the uh, control signal, the step response, and the pole zero maps, and combine it into just one figure. Uh, so uh, maybe one by three, maybe three by one, I uh, might have. Uh, not given this correctly, but you get the idea. This should be uh, so that I am looking at just one graph, this one figure, and uh, figure out which one is better uh, and easily compare them. So that's that. So uh, this part has no proof in it, has no theoretical aspect to it. You will just go ahead and guide me through the PIPD design process that you have thought of 
and um, just go ahead and design your PIPD controller uh, for the same PID uh, setup and the PID controller even. Just transition from PID to PIPD. Maybe you need a little adjustments and then you will uh, hopefully get a better, supposedly, uh, uh, supposedly better solution. And uh, you might also need an approximation for the control signal plot here because PID uh, controller uh, is not uh, a causal one. So you can just go ahead and add a, a pole far away and keep also in mind that you should add this pole so, so that it doesn't change the gain of the system. So uh, that's that. And then we have Q4, the last question. This is about uh, the uh, anti wind up that uh, we will see in the upcoming uh, lectures. Uh, and and uh, once you uh, once we had have that lesson, then you will use your um, student ID in order to generate a transfer function, and then uh, quickly design a PI controller that has a certain damping to it, to it in this interval. It choose freely. Uh, and then uh, you will uh, look for the control signal uh, you will add a saturation element. The upper and lower uh, magnitude will be uh, this steady state value of the control signal. So, uh, And then the item wind up uh, should be added and you should compare the uh, no saturation, no anti wind up control signal, the uh, saturated, uh, no anti wind up control signal and the saturated and uh, the anti wind up added control signal, plot them uh, on top of each other, and maybe add a, a one line of comment uh, to that. Sir. And then that's it. Uh, so basically, hope that uh, I try to uh, guide you so uh, uh, you can go ahead and uh, start. The due date is 5th January, uh, since we will uh, have New Year. I've uh, provided a little extra time, so hopefully that helps. But and keep in mind that Q1 and Q2 are a little bit uh, about the theoretical aspect of control system design. And if you think about it a little bit, uh, just uh, look for uh, polynomial properties, uh, etc. Then you will uh, see that these are not that um, hard to solve. And Q3 is even just a rearrangement of a solution uh, with a little bit of care. And Q4 will be basically just a, a Simulink example most of the time. It is possible to not use Simulink, but you would most probably prefer Simulink. You should, uh, you will construct uh, this control system uh, without anti wind up, and then copy paste it with anti wind and with saturation, and then a third version would be with saturation and with anti wind up, and then just take the parts of the control signals and compare them on a scope. But please uh, let me remind you that you should change the background of the scope in Simulink because it is black and it looks very ugly and it is very hard to uh, see what the signals are. Please make the style arrangements of the scopes um, from the properties of the scopes. Go ahead and change the line width, uh, change some nice colors and a white background. Uh, it would be very easy uh, to the eye if you uh, do that because most of the time uh, since we uh, are having an online education uh, for uh, this period of time. Um, uh, if that was not the case, we were using some projectors and uh, black uh, background that does not work well with them. So please uh, uh, adjust that uh, style too. Uh, so see you later then.